But if you see me when I am taken from you, then you will have my power. If you do not see me, then you will not have it. And as he spoke those words, the skies opened up, and the chariot of fire came roaring out of heaven, pulled by the horses of fire, and came in between Elisha and Elijah. And I would ask you most sincerely, please, don't ask me to give a full explanation of the horses or the chariots of fire, because I don't understand them. I know that the fire is a symbol of God's power and God's presence. I know that the horses and the chariots are symbols of might in this world. But if anyone thinks they know what the author is saying there, I think they are mistaken. And Elijah leaped into the back of the chariot of fire, and then the horses of fire reared up, and a great whirlwind came down and carried them all up into heaven. The important thing is that Elisha saw it happening. And when he saw it happening, he cried out, Elijah, Elijah, great defender of Israel. Then Elijah was gone. But as he disappeared, something fell from the sky, down to the ground. It was the cloak that Elijah had been wearing, and Elisha picked up the cloak, the mantle of Elijah, and he rolled it up, and he touched the Jordan River with it. Cried out, saying, O oh God of Israel, where are you? Then he touched the river again with Elijah's cloak, and this time the river parted, and he crossed to the other side, and the fifty prophets of Jericho said, Behold, the spirit that was in Elijah is now in Elisha. And that meant the work could continue. That meant the spirit of power that moved Elijah was now with Elisha, and Israel would have its defender yet. That's the model upon which the ascension of Jesus Christ is based. When Jesus is about to ascend into heaven, he calls his disciples to him, and of course their great question is this, will we inherit your power? Or when we leave, are all of your ministries finished? Is it all over? But when Jesus was taken, the author of Acts is very careful to say, the disciples looked, and they saw him being taken until he was lost in a cloud. They saw him. And just as Elisha seeing Elijah being taken up meant that Elisha would inherit Elijah's spirit, so it means that when the disciples saw Jesus being taken from them, they would inherit his spirit and his power. Even as Jesus had told them, my spirit will be with you, my power will be in you. The angels appeared to the disciples and said, Galileans, why do you stand staring into the sky? That is not our task. Our task is to bring our eyes down from the sky and look to the world and say to ourselves, what was the ministry of Christ? What was Christ's purpose? What was Christ doing? And whatever it was, we have the power to continue doing it. Spreading the good news that God is love. Lifting up the weak and the broken. Feeding the hungry. Giving value to all people, even if they have been devalued. And building the kingdom which Christ began. The spirit that was in Christ is yours. The power that was His is here today. Next week on Pentecost Sunday, we celebrate it powerfully. But even today and always, we know Christ is with us. We have power and we have wonderful work to do in this world, in His Spirit. 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. A few announcements. There's lots in the bulletin.
has a gift from the congregation, I do apologize. It's my fault. That your computer, your your actual certificate is not ready, but I will get it to you. But I invite you to carry forward. to 
it with understanding, with faith, and with our hearts and souls hungering after Christ. This table is the outward sign and seal of his death and resurrection, our dying and rising in him, the ingrafting into God's family, the forgiveness of sins, and the new life which begins when first we taste sin for you. Come to this table for the renewal of your soul and the building of your spirit. This table is not for those who are proud of their sin, nor is it for those who believe they are without sin. It is for those who, laboring under the burden of their sins, desire to lead a new life by the grace of Christ. On the night that he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, broken for you. Whenever you eat this bread, remember me. In the same way, he took the cup out of his mouth, saying, this cup, this new covenant is filled in my blood. Whenever you drink it, do it in remembrance of me. Every time you eat this bread or drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. These are the gifts of God to the people.
God's love into our souls so that we may be equipped to go out and share God's love with the whole world. This bread is the symbol of God's life given up in Jesus for us. This is the body of Christ broken for you.
the life of Christ poured out for you. Go in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. 